it turned out really serious actually i don't know if you knew that but covid is, COVID is real <laughs> Hi there, my name is Catherine. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be doing the time and place tag. Bob Can Read very kindly tagged me to do this video and his video is amazing. I'll link him below. And I think it was Carl from Please Read Your Book who sort of started this tag. So I'll put him below as well in the description, check them out. I'm very excited to do this tag. So the first book is a book that reminds you of your past. And so for this, Book, I have chosen Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Anna and the French Kiss is a young adult romance. I think it came out in 2010 and it follows a girl called Anna who is sent off to boarding school in Paris. She's American and she's not happy about this. She feels like she's being torn away from her life with her best friend, the guy she fancies at her workplace, her little brother and the book is about her finding new friends in her boarding school as well as a developing relationship with a boy called Etienne Sinclair who is from England. The book follows her just developing new friendships while struggling to keep her friendships in America alive whilst also struggling with feelings for a guy who is her friend who also has a girlfriend. I chose this book for a few reasons most prominently being this book just reminds me of my past in terms of this is probably the book that I reread most out of any books whilst I was in high school. I was obsessed with this book. I still think about it so often. This was kind of like my gateway drug into the romance genre, I think. So it means a lot to me personally. But on a deeper level, I think this book really connected with me in terms of the main character has to move countries and start a new life when she kind of doesn't want to and I never moved countries when I was younger but I did move schools and I moved across the country in Scotland and I had to kind of make new friends and everything and it's a really hard thing to do and it's something that everyone has to deal with whether or not you do it when you're younger, when you're still a child, when you're a teenager or when you're an adult. Change is inevitable at any point in your life. I think this book is really good at highlighting how hard it can be for a teenager especially who is going through one of the most difficult stages in life because they are changing every single day mentally, physically, to have to uproot their life and destabilise this kind of normal that they are clinging on to. It can be really quite difficult. This book really highlights all the emotions that you feel when you have to do that as well as all the kind of joy that comes with change as well though and how even if it is difficult at first if you push through more often than not there is light at the end of the tunnel and things will get better and they will probably be better than they were before a lot of the time I think. Looking back on it now from my perspective as a 26 year old, the friendships in this book kind of remind me of my friendships. Like I had a really close group of friends in high school and you grow apart, drama happens, arguments happens, fallout happens and they feel so world ending at the time. But again, it's something that everyone has to go through. It's really important that you experience these friendships, the good and the bad sides of them all, because they really make you into who you are today. I think this book in particular was really important at showing that friendships are just as important as other relationships in your life, in the sense that they deserve to be nurtured and when you fall out with someone it deserves to be worked through and that doesn't mean that it's always going to end with you making up with the person but at least like if you talk through something with someone at least you've had that conversation you've worked through something and there's a bit of closure there. This book not only gives me nostalgia for being a teenager in the sense that I read it a lot but also that it just captures all the trials and tribulations of being a teenager. No matter how small and insignificant they might seem looking back on them now, they were massive at the time and they really form you into the person that you are as an adult. The next prompt is a book that is set in a place that you want to visit but have never visited and for this book I've chosen to go with Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery which is set in Canada or more specifically 
Prince Edward Island. This book follows Anne, who is an orphan mistakenly taken in by two middle-aged siblings, Matthew and Marilla, and it follows her as she navigates girlhood and coming of age in a new place. Anne is a very optimistic dreamer. She has such a massive imagination, is constantly making things up in her head and has a penchant for the dramatics and it follows her as she just charms everyone around her and builds a life for herself with Matthew and Marilla and friends she makes at school and it is one of the most charming books ever. I've chosen this book for this prompt because I have wanted to visit Canada for so long. I think Canada looks so, so beautiful. It kind of reminds me of Scotland a bit, but like on a, a way bigger, way more dramatic scale. But I would specifically want to visit the Canada that is depicted in Anne of Green Gables because it just seems like a cottage core dream, just surrounded by countryside and beautiful scenery and animals and lovely old houses. Canada just looks beautiful and the people seem really lovely. Ariel Bissett lives there, you know, it just seems, seems like a, a, a warm place. Not warm as in like climate, but warm as in the feeling. The next prompt is a book that is set in a foreign country that I admire and for this prompt I've chosen Call Me By Your Name by Andre Ackerman, which is set in Italy. Call Me By Your Name is about a 17 year old boy called Elio who is spending the summer in northern Italy and develops a relationship with an older man who is also staying there, a guest of his parents. I love Italy. Again, <laughs> I think Italy is a beautiful country. That's what I love most about different countries and traveling is just literally seeing different landscapes and scenery. My family used to go to Italy on holidays when I was younger so like out with UK it's probably the the country I'm most familiar with. I just love it there so much. I love the weather, I love the scenery, I love the atmosphere, the people, the wine, the food, the culture. I love the history of Italy and mythologies surrounding it. The fact that there's so much old stuff everywhere. Like I read, what did I read? There are more UNESCO heritage sites in Italy than in any other country. They have so much history preserved there that you can go and look at and learn about. And I just find that all so interesting. Me and Alex actually had a holiday to Italy booked a year into our relationship and we were so, so excited for, but we had timed it so wrong because it was booked for March 2020. And we all know what happened in March 2020. We were all there and we couldn't go. And it's a good job we didn't go because like there was a part of us that COVID hadn't kind of hit us yet as a kind of reality. <laughs> there was still like kind of doubts about the seriousness of it at that point. But of course, Italy was like a hot spot for it. And so me and Alex were really, really talking about it. Like, is it worth the risk? Is it not? And at the end of the day, it was actually Alex's job that stopped us from going because at that point he was long distance from me working with other people. His work was basically like, if you go and get COVID, you are in big trouble. <laughs> So we were like, yeah, that's not worth the risk. And it's a really good job that we didn't because it turned out really serious, actually. I don't know if you knew that, but COVID is, COVID is real. <laughs> the next prompt is a book that is set in the city slash area you live in. The closest city to me is Bath. So I have chosen for this book, Northanger Abbey, which is set primarily in Bath. This is my favourite Jane Austen book. I've not read much Jane Austen, despite being a humongous fan of many Jane Austen adaptations. I may have only read, apart from this one, Pride and Prejudice, and even then, I'm not even sure if I finished it. But I had to read Northanger Abbey for uni for a gothic module that I was doing, and I am so happy I did. I loved this book 
so so much. This follows a girl called Catherine Moreland who loves gothic literature, she loves the drama of it all and has quite the imagination because when she is invited to stay at Northanger Abbey she begins to get convinced that she is living in her own gothic mansion and terrible things are happening because she reads so much gothic literature that she's kind of manifesting it into her own world when really none of that is happening. It's basically Jane Austen's satire gothic novel. It's very coming of age. Actually, I think all of the books I've chosen are basically coming of age novels that's just hitting me right now interesting. Um, but yeah, this is really, really funny. And whilst I've not reread it since having moved to Bath, which is something that I'm now thinking I should probably do because that would be fun. From what I remember of it and from what I know of Bath now, it does capture the city really, really well. I went to visit the Roman Baths quite recently. One of the big takeaways from that was just how like social a place the Baths were for like gossiping. It wasn't just a place where you went for leisure, you went there for a good gossip and this book really captures that well. They don't go to the bath but they go to, I think they go to the pump room. It's just really really funny. If you've not read this classic I really think you should. It's so good. Finally the last prompt is a book set in the future that you think is or will be realistic. I've kind of cheated with this one. I can only apologise. <laughs> But I have chosen Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro and I've cheated because this isn't set in the future but it is mildly dystopian and futuristic but I just want to preface this by saying Ishiguro purposely didn't set this book in the future. He says, I'm not very turned on by futuristic landscapes and I didn't want to write anything that could be mistaken for prophecy. Apart from Kathy's childhood memories around which there could be a little sun and vibrancy, I wanted to paint an England with the kind of stark chilly beauty I associate with certain remote rural areas and half forgotten seaside towns. The novel offers a version of Britain that might have existed by the late 20th century if just one or two things had gone differently on the scientific front. So basically he will refer to this as more of an alternate history rather than a dystopian sci-fi novel. This book is basically about a girl named Kathy who is in her 30s but is looking back on her childhood, growing up in Hailsham School and the friendships she had there. But this basically takes place in an alternate history in England in the 1990s where cloning has been made possible and Kathy H and the other students at Hailsham School are basically clones who are being brought up to eventually donate organs. So I've kind of cheated with this prompt because any books that I could think that were set in the future were really really bleak like Hunger Games level bleakness and I don't want to think about the world feeling like that. And I was trying to think of like any other books that are set in the future that are a bit more positive that I've read and I couldn't. And then I thought of this one, which isn't technically set in the future as I've said, but I was like, this is feasible that I could see this happening where we reach a stage where science is able to clone humans and we decide that we'll clone humans in order to better real humans. But then that begs the question, why are the clones not real humans? And I could see this being a really like ethically fraught situation in the future. Because at the end of the day, I think we've learned from our history that as much as technology and science advances, as much as we learn and grow as humans, we still don't have answers and we kind of grapple with the same questions that people have since the beginning beginning of time. And I think this book really does a good job at highlighting that, that the future and alternate histories and everything may look vastly different or may look quite similar, but at the end of the day all of these worlds are still dealing with the same problems and the same issues. And I think this book is really really good at making you reflect on what it means to be human, what constitutes a life 
being worth more than another life and he does it in a really really beautiful way. Um, I also love the adaptation, the film adaptation of this book which stars Carrie Mulligan, Andrew Garfield and Kira Knightley. I would like to reread this actually because I feel like I would appreciate it way more now but I really do want to read more Ishiguro as well. I think he is an amazing writer and I love this book. Thank you so much again to Bob Can Read for tagging me in this video. Again, I'll link him down below and I want to pass this tag on to Nikhil's Nook and Louise Marianne who I'll also link below but no pressure for them to do this, it's just a bit of fun. I really hope you enjoyed watching this. I found some of the prompts quite challenging which is why I had a G on one but it was really good because it made me kind of reflect on the types of books I like to read. Apparently I love coming of age. I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!